The Sea of Galilee Although not a real sea, it has remained named as such due to the staunch traditions, mainly religious which have grown and flourished from around its shores. The first century historian, Flavius Josephus for example, was so impressed by the areas surrounding the Sea of Galilee, he once wrote, quote, One may call this place the ambition of nature. Reporting a thriving fishing industry around the lake, with well over 200 boats regularly working the waters, archaeologists have since discovered only one such fishing vessel, found in 1986. It has been nicknamed the Jesus Boat. According to Christian religion, much of the ministry of Jesus Christ himself actually occurred upon the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and a recent discovery within the waters themselves has continued to perplex specialists within the area astounding all who have been exploring said discovery, and weighs an estimated 60,000 tons according to researchers. An astonishing size, making it much heavier than any of our modern-day warships. Rising nearly 32 feet out of the ancient sea's sediment, it also has a diameter of about 230 feet. Stonehenge, for example, which is an impressive ancient structure in its own right, has an outer stone circle diameter of only half that, First discovered in 2003 using sonar exploration of the southwest portion of the sea, divers have since been down to investigate the presumably ancient structure, writing regarding their finds within the latest issue of International Journal of Nautical Archaeology. Researcher Yitzhak Paz, Antiquities Authority, and Ben Gurion University believes it could date back more than 4,000 years. Quote, the more logical possibility is that it belongs to the 3rd millennium BC, because there are other megalithic phenomena from that time that are found close by, Paz told LiveScience.com in an interview, noting that those sites are associated with fortified settlements. Could it be that this is where the peoples of Bet Yura buried and honored their dead? Is this a proverbial city of the dead, or something else entirely? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we understand this amazing structure for what it truly once was. We will of course keep you posted. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Within the country of Ethiopia, some seriously old megalithic ruins can be found. Many of unknown age. For example Tia, located in the Sodo region of Ethiopia. An archaeological marvel, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, remarkable for its large stone pillars. But imagine the surprise of initial explorers when they stumbled across an entire church, in the shape of a Templar cross, completely carved out of the ground. Made of a type of volcanic tuff, I'm sure its initial rediscovery would have come with considerable archaeological interest. Who could have carved such a structure, straight out of the rock, or indeed why? It is known as the Church of St. George, and is largely thought to have been constructed around 1200 AD, yet, alas, no one really knows. The Church of St. George is one of 11 monolithic churches in Lalibela, a city in the Amhara region of Ethiopia. Originally named War War, the historical and religious area was named Lalibela after the King Jebemiskel Lalibela, of the Zagat dynasty, who supposedly commissioned its construction. Although like the pharaohs of Egypt, he may have just laid claim to the impressive ancient structures which resided in the region long before himself. He may have also been attributed with the act due to him being regarded as a saint by the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahito Church. No one can really explain how he could have built it, and many religious followers believe he received instruction from God. With many ancient sites upon earth, if researched heavily enough, reveal evidence that they predate their modern held suspected builders. For instance the amazingly designed ancient site of Puma Punku, which contains stones created in weight-bearing shapes, with no mortar ever being used, yet the structures were earthquake-proof. These structures were said even by the Incas to have been there before them, they believed they were constructed by the gods themselves. The only conclusions that can be made from such structures including the Church of St. George is that the builders were highly sophisticated. Enlightening artifacts may vanish, but thankfully, the ancients built structures to last. And a Templar church carved into the stone ground, in the middle of Ethiopia, of unknown origin, is a very curious structure indeed. No other ruins anywhere on our planet is surrounded with more controversy than that of the Great Pyramids of Egypt, or indeed its accompanying plateau. There are many factors to consider when it comes to Egyptology. Within academic fields, there are many no-go areas of study. Although hard work and research within permitted areas 
has taught us a great deal about the previous 4,000 years of the site's inhabitants. Yet regardless of the most astute academic thesis, there remains three, proverbially, large elephants in the room. When it comes to a full or even a mere fraction of an explanation in regards to the origin, of these seemingly impossibly huge pyramids remains patiently absent. No accounts, illustrations of any kind from the era exists. It is simply illogical, especially when one considers the sheer feat these structures must have been. We have presented many previous features, polygonal masonry being present on the pyramids. Eroded, yet younger casing stones protecting inner megaliths clearly of a tremendous age. Salt sediment found encrusting the lower chambers, and so on, suggesting not only that the pyramids are much older than currently claimed, but were pre-flood ruins. Thus, questions arise. Just how old are the Great Pyramids? In addition to our study of the pyramids, we have also, in the past, asserted that the Sphinx was originally a lion which, interestingly, correlates to the following hypothesis with fascinating accuracy. The Orion Theory The coincidence with pyramids aligned with Orion's belt and other significant constellational positions. Bavall and Hancock support the theory, believing the Great Sphinx was begun in 10,500 BC, creating reference to the constellation of Leo and the orientation of the entire complex with the Nile River and even Milky Way, claimed by them as connected respectively. Zeptepi, using similar methodology, put the age at over 13,000 years. These are clearly astonishing proposals, but the current paradigm for their chronology, we feel, is far too short a time span, and due to our own research, which has uncovered evidence indicative of pre-flood origins, copper tools for such an accomplishment a mere insult to intelligence. Yet, thankfully, due to these various takes on events, their age remains highly contested, and to us, a mystery which is incredibly compelling. <laughs>